we packed our five day trip to Kyoto with yummy food, sightseeing, and matcha. Each day was designed around key vegetarian restaurants, so this itinerary can be used as a guide through Kyoto specifically for plant based travelers. We're off to our first full day in Kyoto. It's gonna do a lot of walking, hopefully, some shopping, and we'll take you around. Day one is all about Gion. We started the day early enough that the shops were just opening and the streets weren't crowded, although it got crowded pretty quickly. We had breakfast at the most interesting Starbucks I've ever been in, where the building is a historical, traditional Japanese house with tatami seating. I would say it's a must to experience. We are gonna go to that temple over there, and then we're gonna walk down this long street of shops, eat our way through it, and shop our way through it. The streets quickly changed into an area of what seemed like shrine after shrine. Luke and I spent quite a bit of time here. Where are we? I actually don't know the name of the temple. But we got this little corner of this temple to ourselves. Everyone's way over there. You just walk a little bit more. It's more private. Okay, we just went into that temple there behind us. That was one of the coolest experiences ever. Basically, it's pitch black. You have to touch the wall the entire way inside. And you're making your way through this place, that's kind of like a maze, to touch this stone and make a wish. And then the stone is the only thing that's illuminated. Everything else is totally dark. I couldn't see anything. If I closed my eyes and opened my eyes, it was exactly the same. It felt a little bit like being in a temple in The Legend of Zelda. We finally made it to Kiyomizudera Temple, a UNESCO heritage site. This is the shop people come for. We then stopped to have lunch on the temple grounds. Okay. For fishing out the tofu, it comes with a soup. A sauce. Or a sauce. I think it's a soup. We call it a soup. All right. And then it has some spring onions to put on it as well. We then walked to a geisha show that I had reserved in advance. The show also included a matcha tea ceremony performed by the geisha. From there, we visited Ryozen Cannon a World War II memorial for unidentified Japanese soldiers. Our night ended at Gion Tanto, an okonomiyaki restaurant that came highly, highly recommended and with a line out the door to show for it. However, we weren't impressed. We concluded it's more hype than quality. Alright, this is our second full day in Kyoto and today we're going to do the botanical gardens in the Imperial Palace. I am wearing a dress because it is super warm outside and humid, um, so I hope this is a good call. I don't know if it goes well with my socks and my shoes, but that's all I have. Shall we do it? Let's do it. On our way to the Imperial Palace, we ran into a parade because it was actually a holiday. Look, oh, this awesome. is the sort of stuff you just see in Japan. Make sure you check what days are holidays. That totally caught us off guard which ended up meaning that part of the Imperial Palace was closed, as was the Botanical Garden. On another episode with Maria in Japan. Look at that. Look at all the different kinds of trees around us. You've got brown trees, you've got flowy trees, you've got low trees. We had walked from Gion to the palace and by noon, we had a worked up an appetite. We found this nearby vegetarian restaurant and it ended up being a really great find. After lunch, we then walked to King Kakuji, the gold pavilion, and wow, it's just another must see in Kyoto. Don't trip. How you doing? Fantastic, that was worth it for the whole day. 
Oh. Ah. No Shot more. No more. One more. One more. Oh, it went in and jumped out. <laughs> For dinner, we went to Tausen, which was the best ramen we had in the entire trip. You have to go here. The ramen we just had is soy milk based, and the key ingredient that we added to it is called chlorella. I've never heard of chlorella before, but it's like this green leaf that they pulverize into a powder that you can add to it. it tastes like spinach. Delicious. High in B12. Super high in B12. So then we added that to our ramen, and then we had chlorella cake and chlorella ice cream. It was very good. I feel like this scene merits an explanation. I am obsessed with bamboo, and specifically, I knew I wanted to buy bamboo baskets in Japan. And literally right around our Airbnb, there was this store where a woman hand makes all of this. I was in shock, I was in heaven, and I left still staring at the store. <laughs> I'm taking these couple minutes to reflect on what I have observed so far, and I'm really impressed by the level of respect in this culture. Like, as simple as the fact that nobody will cross the street unless they have the green light to do so as a pedestrian. That's just not something that I've seen in San Francisco, in New York, or any of the cities really that I've been to in the States. You kind of see, eh, Europe too, you see your opportunity to cross and you cross. But okay, let's get going because we've got a lot to do today and we really needed to get started on the soon side and it's 7.39, which is a little later than we have been getting ready to go because we've been waking up at like 4, 5 a.m with jet lag, but slowly adjusting means waking up a little later and we gotta go. Bye. Day three was a huge day. We crammed in hiking up the iconic Fushimi Inari Shrine and going to Uji, further south for a yeah. matcha day. We are at Fushimi Inari, which is a really famous temple of these orangey gates. And we're gonna walk and hike and hopefully summit. Ushimi Onari is the head shrine of Onari, the god of rice and prosperity. The orange Tori gates are donations. The bigger the gate, the bigger the donation. Mid-climb check-in. How you doing? Not bad. It's supposed to be two to three hours. We're gonna do it in under one. How you doing? Feeling good. I just got this candle that we have to light with rocks at the top. At the bottom of the hike, there were street food vendors with plenty of plant-based options. Mm, it's good. Yeah, it's like chewy, sweet, grilled. Mm, yeah. I like it. <laughs> From there, we hopped on a train south to Uji, where we were going to learn about matcha and hopefully have the best matcha of our lives. We are in Uji, which is the birthplace of matcha, and we're going to have a lot of matcha today. And that's the Uji River. That's sweet. We are going to the Uji Matcha factory where we're gonna learn about matcha, the leaves, how to make it, how to grind it. We're just gonna drink a lot of matcha today. We're gonna probably be over caffeinated, which I'm gonna be okay with, because this is the matcha mecca. It's where matcha was discovered, right? Discovered? Invented? <laughs> right in there. Let's go. I couldn't find a way to book this in advance, so you should know we did a walk-in and it was perfectly fine. So she said that the leaf is the tencha leaf mm -hmm. and the powder is called matcha. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And you grind it for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. so I get it. Oh, We 
We were taught that you first whisk vigorously for 30 seconds and then lightly for 30 seconds. You want to end up with a lot of foam but no bubbles. Foam on your whisk is also a sign of a good cup of matcha. <laughs> I made this. How's your bowl of matcha? It's smooth actually. It's not bitter. No, mine's not bitter either. You must have done a good job. I must have. Uh, the way you pick is you want to get basically a mom, dad, and a child. And how does this make you feel? Like I'm learning. Come on, there's so much for us to pick. How's it going? Show me your bag. I believe we're going to make tempura with this, right? Yep. So we just picked our tea leaves and we have to take these home. Uh, I don't know if Customs is going to let us take those. And in the meantime, she tempered some other tea leaves that they picked earlier. So the way she said to eat this was to grab the matcha powder and sprinkle it on top of your tea leaves. If we're not properly caffeinated by the end of this. <laughs> and then this is stem leaf tea. So mm -hmm. the stems of the tea leaves make their own tea. Crunchy. It's pretty perfect. An interesting thing has happened to me. I've gotten over caffeinated and I'm shutting down. <laughs> Actually shutting down. <laughs> I didn't know that could happen. I can't have any more matcha. <laughs> <laughs> I had three cups. We finished our time in Uji by visiting Biodo Inn. To me, it was the most impressive temple yet. Once we got back to Gion, we went shopping. This made in Japan canvas bag store was awesome. We love finding locally made high quality products and this fit that bill perfectly. We're getting lots of bags. <laughs> you got the tax. We then went to another local brand store, Yojia, for makeup and skincare. I got a lot of goodies here. For dinner, we went to Mimiku in the Gion area to have udon noodle curry. It was super flavorful and also very filling. That's good. If you haven't had that, you should have that. The tempura? It's like onion maji, right? Mm -hmm. Day four might have been my favorite day in Kyoto. We got up early and went west to Arashiyama Bamboo Grove. Although the grove was gorgeous, it quickly started getting super crowded, although we got there really early. The best part of Arashiyama, however, was the scenic and peaceful river and the monkeys. Hello, Maria. We are having an amazing morning. We are on a private, unintentional, I think, boat ride. We are by the bamboo forest. There's a little river that goes by the bamboo forest and you can rent boats. It'll be about 30 minutes of just this. Best ones we've had. Yeah. They're nice and warm. What do you think of the garden, Maria? Fantastic. This is the first Zen temple in Japan. Very well raked. 
There's a Buddhist restaurant inside the gardens that we had a lunch reservation for. We're about to eat some Buddhist monk food on the floor. It turns out to be Michelin restaurant. It's Buddhist food. Vegan, like nine plates with tofu and vegetables and soups. So good. It's so nice here. This is perfect. I'm so happy we came here. I'm climbing to see the monkeys. I couldn't believe how close you're able to be to these monkeys and how many there were. We are at the Arashiyama Monkey Park and we're seeing the cutest monkeys. They're so cute. I think we got good footage. After the monkeys, we left Arashiyama and went back to Gion to do the philosopher's path. Some midday coffee because certain someone passed out on the bus. <laughs> Mouth ajar. Luke is really good at doing that. <laughs> right as we began the path, we found this local shoe store with Made in Japan shoes. Lou got these green shoes, I should have gotten some shoes too. The Philosopher's Path is a historical footpath that takes you through several UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The first stop is Ginkakuji, or the Silver Pavilion, which has these amazing sand gardens. I'm eating mochi with a strawberry and red bean paste stuffing. How is it? We walked the entire philosopher's path and honestly by this point I was so tired. We went back to the Airbnb to change because we had a very very cool dinner reservation. Are you filming? Yeah. Why not? It's a private room. Explain Ooh. what happened on the way here and why you're feeling so relieved. Well, we made this reservation two days ago because we wanted a really fantastic meal experience. And when we Googled it to start walking over, it said it was closed. So we thought, oh crap, did the booking system get the reservation off? Um, so we just started rushing, walking over. And when we got here, it looked a little bit closed. Like it, we didn't see anybody inside. Um, but luckily, <laughs> we peeked, peeked our heads in and they came around the corner and brought us in. So this is a Michelin restaurant that serves traditional Kyoto food. And they happen to have a vegetarian course. We're going to be having... That's too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine courses. So hopefully it'll be good. We'll let you know. Okay, first course was in fact very good. We had a Japanese pickle sushi and fried ginkgo nut, which ginkgo nuts are so soft and creamy, and a chestnut. Oh, it's as if you were walking through a parsley garden. We also have no idea how much this sake pairing is, but they are smooth. <laughs> the service has been amazing. 
We keep hearing our hostess run back and forth. <laughs> I've never been in a mission place where the hostess is running, but it's kind of cute. They've been so friendly. We don't speak Japanese, they don't speak English, so we've been using Google Translate to hear what everything is about. They just gave us another serving because we asked of rice. The service has been top notch. Truly, of all the mission places I've ever been, they are so welcoming. It's been really nice. Okay, try something with me. What? Step on every third square, you get faster and faster, faster, faster. Try it with me. What do you mean every third? All right, you go first. I'll watch. Okay, a quick room tour of where we stayed in Kyoto. The place is called Resi Stay, and it's a building, actually a quite sizable building of four floors and tons of different rooms per floor, and the rooms are super sizable. This is the bedroom with a queen bed. There is a balcony. I believe this is a pull-out sofa bed. We didn't use it as a sofa bed, but it was great for putting some things on the table. There's this door that closes the main bedroom from this area, which has a microwave. The bathroom, which I really liked this bathroom. This bathroom had a really fantastic toilet, and this whole room is a shower room, so you could just stand here and close the door and the whole room was a shower room so i thought that this was a really fantastic place in a great location luke actually thinks that this was the best location that we could have had in kyoto because it has access to several different subway lines and bus lines so this is the resi stay in gion and super happy with that Okay, we are all packed up. We're gonna leave our bags in some compartment that they have downstairs for leaving your bags locked, which is also really helpful because we have we have our train to catch to Osaka later today and we're gonna do some shopping in the meantime. So being able to leave our bags here somewhere safe is also super plus. We did laundry this morning with the laundry room that they have downstairs. So overall, what would you rate this place? 10 out of 10? 9 out of 10, would you stay here again? I'd definitely stay here again, yeah. Really affordable. I and think well it was around 100 so. or under 100 or just above 100, somewhere in that $100 a night, which yep. I thought that was great. This was our last meal in Kyoto and we chose ramen, completely plant based, soy milk based ramen, and truly, we enjoyed it. Yummy vegan ramen place, soy milk base, super light. I had a whole bowl and I'm feeling like I can walk. Our last stop in Kyoto was to Nishiki Market where we were going to this knife store where some of the best knives in the country are made. We got two knives and got both of them engraved with our last names. Yeah. And just like that, we wrapped up five whole days in Kyoto where we walked so many miles, drank so much matcha, and ate the yummiest food. All right, what are we doing? Our time in Kyoto is over, and we're moving on to Osaka. We're going to get on a train, and we'll be there in about an hour and ten minutes, which is pretty stellar. I am exhausted, absolutely 1000% exhausted. I have no idea where I'm going to get the energy to do almost another week of this pace. We'll see.